hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Pork here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Today I'm joined by John from London. How are you doing, John? All good, mate. All good. How are you going? Yourself? I'm all right, mate. I'm okay. Well, uh, we're going to go balls deep straight away then. Uh, mm -hmm. Tunde Ajayi and Rob Tebbett. Mm. Is there a bit of intense beef there, uh, John? Mm. Mm. Talk about trust. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to start with Tunde Ajayi on this. Yeah, he does come across uh, a bit out there at, at times and that and a bit loud, but if you're sending somebody a message like that, mm. you've got a relationship in your industry with this person. You may have ups and downs. I mean, if I were to put every voice text out that I get sent off people, and when, when you, your relationship's like a roller coaster, I, 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 my life wouldn't be worth living, would it? Mm. So I betray that trust and do that. Why? Mm. Fair enough, Tunde sent him a. We're not even going to play it anyway, because uh, Rob. Mm. Look, it's not even worth talking about, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. We're not gonna play it. Mm. No, point I want to make is Tunde is obviously not happy with something Rob's done, so he's told him, blah de blah, you'll not get access to my fighter and this and that. He's just fighting corner for his fighter, isn't he? Mm. Rob Tebbert, Rob Tebbert to put that on social media, eh? Well, that's the thing. It's trust how how is he going to gain credibility again who's going to trust him yeah it's he's a, doing it for attention mm, which is really sad really because he's quite fairly respected and not, he's to be not, shared he's not this morning there's people who, who well, me this morning well, well after this morning definitely his, his credibility has definitely gone down um the credibility's on skid why, row yeah why, why would you do that what are you trying to achieve? I don't know. You know, um, that's what little girls do. That's what little girls do. Rob Tebbert, you should be ashamed of yourself. I ought to put your phone number on social media, didn't I? But I'm not that type of person. But you should be embarrassed doing that. You, you, you've got access to all these fighters and mm. managers, trainers, promoters, and you're going doing that. Well, what if anybody else has ever sent you a, a voice text, Rob, Rob Tebbert? They'll be deleting them now, won't they? Because you're not to be trusted, mate. You're not to be trusted. And I, and I bet you what's going to come out next is someone hacked my phone. Yeah, my that's what it'll be, mate. Some, that's what's going to be next. Watch. That'll be, that'll someone be, hacked my Twitter account. Some MI6 uh, caper going on this, isn't it? it? It's craziness on a crazy scale. So, Rob Tebbert, you should kneel in shame. You should kneel before Tunde Ajayi and him and apologise for what you did. I still yeah. can't believe that. Why would you do that, though? I don't know, mate. I don't you know. know. So, oh, hang on a second. I've just got a text off my mate. Oh, it looks like it's been took down. <coughs> I took it down. He shit his pants, has not he? Absolutely. He must have got a lot of heat from that. Of course he will have got um, heat from that, but damage is done now. Mm, it's too late. Damage is done now. Nobody will trust him now. Nobody will trust Tebbert now. Got too big for oh. his boots. And he's, he thought he were a ro some roadman gangster. That's the problem. The, the thing is, trust is everything. And if you're doing things like that, no one's going to trust you. And it's, it's, it's childish as well. We're two grown men and we're talking about things. Or we leave it as that. You know, we don't start sharing it like little girls. You know, that's what girls do. It's embarrassing. Yeah, it's like, it's, yeah, that's like a little, what little eight-year-old girls do, isn't it, at school? Absolutely, you expect that. How are you going to trust someone like that again? How's anyone going to trust trust him? You know what I mean? You know. What, 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 is, what is Rob Tabbert? Was he an actor or something? Was he an actor or something? And all of a sudden he's down of this... He's sold as all this guru boxing guy, this guru expert knowledge guy, and now he's now now he's just turned into Bertie Smalls, in my opinion, hasn't he? Okay. Yeah, well, everyone wants to, everyone wants to muscle into boxing and try and you know have their little say, two pence, oh, yeah. <laughs> their little say, and and he he must probably had 
been, he's been getting a little bit of clout from it. So um, hence the reason why he's, he's, you know, getting too big for his boots. Yeah, Rob, Rob Tebbert, you're an arsehole. Come see me. Oh. Right, well, we'll draw a line under uh, Rob, mm. Rob, Teb Rob Tebbert gate. Mm -hmm. Bertie Small, oh. a.k.a. Bertie. But uh, <laughs> Gareth A. Davis is getting a lot of stick this last week. He's on, he's on social media. He, he's, uh, he, he's doing a Zoom interview with this this blonde bird who's a boxer. She's, and it, she's, that, she's standing up in front of him while he's oogling her. I mean, I mean, what's happened to to well, Is boxing getting seedier and seedier now? We we've got informant uh, officer Tebbit uh, reporting back to Scotland Yard, and we've got uh, Gareth A. A. Davis. You know, you know the uh, the, the Fred West of uh, the boxing media. What's going on here? You know what? I don't know if it's <sighs> mental health. Yeah. Can we put it down to mental health? But a lot of these guys are misbehaving. Everybody's <laughs> got mental yeah, but every time anybody's a problem, they're all saying you've got mental health. I'm not, I think I've had mental I'm, health all my life. You, let's just say everybody's got mental health and it's how you how you handle it. We've all got issues, haven't we? But people keep playing this mental health. I don't want to hear it no more. Mental health. No, no, absolutely. Well, the thing about Gareth Davis is he's he's everywhere. Yeah. He's in UFC. MMA, always trying to sneak in. What about when he said he sends Dana White a Christmas card every year? <laughs> that was funny, that. <laughs> I sent Dana White a card every year. Did you get my card, Dana? <laughs> I got many. <laughs> Gareth A. Davis, rinse your mouth out with TCP, then brush your teeth 25 times with Colgate. Yeah. Yeah, you know, these are the kind of guys that are killing boxing. Um, we're getting more and more of these kind of guys that are salesmen. You know what happened, John, the other day, Ray? When I, I tuned into boxing and they, they tuned into pundits. There's Ricky Hatton there, sloshed with big old big old neck on him. And there's Gareth A. Davis in, in a purple suit with a, with, a, with a black Roger Moore polar neck on and Del Boy chain with, with uh, G for Gareth on it. Oh, G. And I, I suppose we're, we're now going to revert to our boxing expert analysis. Expert analysis, Gareth A. Davis, talking about how you throw a jab and hooking off the jab. Gareth, this is, he's not hooking off the jab enough, De A. Davis. Hooking off the jab. Hooking off? What the hell, what the hell is that? Hooking off? What on earth? Hooking off the jab. <laughs> check Gareth, check hook A. Davis. Oh, my God. Do you know what I mean? He, he, he's the same with, with um, when he I talks mean? about him at UFC as well. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it, yeah. yeah it, it tries to be an expert, but... Unbelievable. Nah. But, uh, I'm, I'm not impressed by Gareth A. Davis. He's got to be the seediest man in boxing at the moment. If Adam Smith, Bean, if he's the scariest man in boxing, Gareth A. Davis, you're the seediest man in world boxing. All right. Mm. Uh, third issue yeah. I want to bring up. Third issue I want to bring up. You, you do know that uh, in April uh, last year, John Fury mm. came out, didn't he? And uh, It's like mm. a broken record this now, but I need closure on it. Mm. Fury came out and he said that uh, he's the best man over 50. Right? Mm -hmm. Like any man over 50. So, mm -hmm. we're all right with story so far, aren't we, John? So, Mickey Theo accepted his challenge. So, mm -hmm. we have, we, Mickey's over 50, John's over 50. So, that's where we're at. John's replied, You've got yourself a fight. Mm -hmm. Some people started getting involved. Mickey had people getting involved, some people behind the scenes. John did. And he had, he had a manager, agent, Spencer Brown. They arranged a date, May 28th. So we're all okay with this now so far, aren't we, yeah? May mm -hmm. 28th were arranged, but it was arranged in the middle of the pandemic because the pandemic were second week in Feb, wasn't it? So mm -hmm. three, three, 14 weeks after the pandemic started in the country, they were going to fight. Since mm -hmm. then, we've had a climb down. I've seen emails, I've seen text messages, third voice mm -hmm. text. 
we've had a climb down, but Mickey's kicked on with it. But after the climb down, John came out and said, be at this gym tomorrow at X amount of time. You can't expect somebody to drive 215 miles at the drop of an out and drop everything and just turn up like that on your turf where you want. That wasn't the original agreement. The agreement were they're going to do it for charity as a challenge for to over 50, after over 50s. But NHS, since then, Mickey's added well, let's donate some to mental health now. So mm -hmm. we're, we're all right with stories so far, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Good cause as well, mental John, health. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, both good causes. So John's saying, mm -hmm. because you've not turned up, that's it, it's done. Now that, to me, looks like he's just shut it down. He's just shut the fight down. Yeah. Nobody's saying John Fury can't fight. Nobody's saying that. What we're saying is the silence now is golden. Now, people mm -hmm. keep saying, I get a lot of emails every single day and, and phone calls like, why, why aren't you nipping this in? Well, I'm going to nip it in, but now, John Fury, in my opinion and Mickey's opinion, he needs to come out and say he don't want to fight because he's got other things going on in his life and he made a mistake. He's never going to say that. He's not the best man over 50. I know that. So they're trying the silence is golden one, aren't they? Mm -hmm. But Mick's not going to let up. So the, the, he's going to turn the heat up now and is going to embarrass him into a fight. And I mean, in all sorts, but he's going to have to fight or come out and say he don't want to. Because you can't come out and do things for PR and then just turn it on and off when you want with media. You can't play them yeah. games because people have short memories, don't they? Uh, I think it's the fight I want to see. I'm not big on this YouTube boxing stuff and I'm taking limelight out off of uh, off a young kid's card. Um, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. But but the, but John called it on and it needs to be nipped in bud and I don't I don't think it's going to do any harm if they're not going to be going in box rec rankings and hurting anybody's ranking and they're going to raise mm. a bit of money for charity and they might get a few quid out of it themselves which which they probably deserve if they're going to knock lumps out on each other but the fact that Big John six foot three and a half eighteen stone nineteen stone whatever he is can't deal with a guy my height five nine and probably a cruiserweight in weight or maybe a touch under. Mm. He, he's got all the advantages. He's been in, he's been in with Henry Akin one day who, who went on to win a world title. I know I know he stopped John in third round or second. I think he might have been third. Uh, but, uh, have you seen that fight? Have you seen no, that fight? No, nobody's seen that fight. I've seen one fight. I was ringside and I had a DVD copy of John against Neil Malpaz, but... Steve Oldsworth, the guy who's got the, the copyright to it, he's not selling anymore unless he's paid thousands of pounds because John's told him that that fight's worth thousands because it's only footage of John Fury fighting. Now, I had a copy of it. <laughs> Give 25 quid for it. And I get it, John. He's not going to put it out on social media, are you, John? And we know why, because he gets licked in the fight, doesn't he? And that, that spoils the myth, doesn't it? But my argument is John's got all the advantages, man, all the advantages, Reach, height, weight, experience, uh, uh, mm. and boxing know-how, uh, and he's the best, he says. So he's got all that to his advantage, but he can't come and nip this in, bud. Mm. He's fighting, man. Yeah. He can't nip it in, bud. Yeah. So that's the, that's yeah. the bottom line of it. The rest of it is just other people getting involved, making yeah. phone calls and stuff and emails and just rubbish. Yeah. Rubbish. yeah. Yeah, you, you, you got to remember, John is a big, intimidating guy and he's yeah. intimidating a lot of people in Boxton. Nobody's seen him have a fight, though, have they? It's a myth. Yeah, but if he loses to make a feel, got a lot to that's lose. That's it. A lot to lose. If he loses to make a feel, that's it. You got to remember, a lot of people are scared of him and he's got Why this though? aura Why of. Why, though? Because he took a man's eye out. A small I think man, he, a very small he, man's eye out he took out. Very small man. That's wow. The That's the truth. It's all there. Google John Fury. John Fury mm. sentenced 11 years or whatever. He got it reduced to nine years, so four and a half. But Google it and it'll tell you. Ophi Sykes, five foot five, ten stone wet through, took his eye out at car auction. That's the bottom wow. line. So where's this big roadman killer myth come from? It's from him. Mm. He's training it all the time. Now, John, you need to come and fight Mickey Fio and nip it in bud or come, get on social media. You have to come on my channel because I'm not bothered about having you on now. Shit house you are. But why don't you just go on somebody else's channel and say, I don't want to fight you, Mick. 
or that you do want to fight him. But either way, do something because you shot your mouth off now and you look very stupid. So mm. it, the, the thing is, he is looking stupid now. But one thing I can guarantee you, he will never say he doesn't want to fight Mickey Field. He will, that will never come out of his mouth. Never. Well, he needs to remember forget about that thought. That would never come out of his mouth. Point is, uh, he, he's a fighting man. He's a fighting man. So that word, I is he a fighting man? Though? Who's he had a fight with? This hundred thousand pound bare knuckle fight that he had and beat this guy. Well, well, where's the guy? There's a five thousand pound reward out for information on who the guy is. Nobody's even come forward. What? Not one travelling man's come to me and said, "Oh, I know who that is. I want the reward." And I know loads of travellers around here. In South mm. Yorkshire. And they're like, they, they'd never heard of it. It didn't happen, wouldn't happen, never happened. Mm. And he never had hundred grand anyway then. So it's rubbish. The rest of it is just people on social media who believe the hype. It's shithouse behaviour. Mm. Plus he called me a blowjob around his brother Peter and Dennis Sobs. Now he's their blowjob. Well, look, stick some stones. Well, you're, John, you're a shithouse and a fraud. How's about that? Shots fired. <laughs> It'll be a good fight, though. Who do you, who, who's your money on? My money would have to be on my man, wouldn't it? Mickey Fio, because I've seen him train. He was sprinting this morning at 5.30. Sprinting. And then it'll be 5.30. About half an hour, he'll just finish the pad session outside. And then he'll go to strength and conditioning tonight. It's his life, mate. You know, he sent me a, a video last night where he was eating. It was... Uh, Brown rice and grilled salmon with, with some sort of veg or something. No fats, no sugar. The guy's like a machine. He lives it. And then he's going to bed at quarter past nine. So he's actually he's taking it seriously. Well, he's been like this all his life, hasn't he, Mick? Mm, mm, that's true. That's no, true. Uh, he said to me, that's what? True. I said, he's cottage cheese and jacket tate is a good meal, Mick, to lose weight. He went, no. How can it be? It's got butter in it. I said, what's a good meal? It's a jacket take you on its own. This is with no butter and no cheese. Wow. The man's a machine, isn't he? It? It'll be a good fight. I would love to. I think everyone wants to see that fight. John's a it's a shame. Southpaw, well, isn't it? Southpaw. Mm. Big long reach, Southpaw. Probably a 70. It's like Derek Chisora fighting Tyson Fury and Tyson fighting Derek as a Southpaw. That's the that's what that sort of styles are classic. John Wick, big long reach, Southpaw. Mm. And obviously, John knows the game. He's been around it all his life. So he's got height, reach, weight. He's a Southpaw. He's got experience. He's got all that on Mick. But yeah, he can't turn up. Turn up, John. Turn up. It's a shame. Has, has Mickey been in, in touch with his uh, with Spencer? Yeah, he's tried everything. He's not getting in touch with him. I said, I'll fight that Spencer Brown on undercard if it helps get fight going, just to put some added spice to it. Mm. But me, you just turn up, don't you? You have a fight, you win or lose. That's it, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? There's a winner, there's a loser, isn't there? Mm. They, they, they need to settle it because you're, you are right. In one of your podcasts, they will bump into each other at some stage. They'll bump into they will see each other. And they'll get, Mick will get straight at it with him. No messing about if it's needed to, do you know what I mean? But isn't it better to do it like gentlemen, like what we first agreed, instead of all this back and forward? John needs to come out and speak. He needs to apologize to me for calling me a blowjob around his brother Peter and Dennis Hobson. And then I'll apologize for calling him a shithouse fraud. Mm. I don't think he's going to do that. No, it's, it's a shame. Right they want it to go away, don't they? They're playing the, the media game, aren't they? They want it to go away. I ain't going away. <laughs> Phone calls, emails and texts on YouTube. They're not going to stop me. They can call me any name they want. I've heard it all last few weeks. Every vile name that could possibly say something to go under your skin. And it's water off a duck's back after 30, what, 38 months doing this. It's water off mm. a food and drink to me now because I'm doing my job. When they're reacting mm. like that, you see where I'm coming from, mm. and I'm still, mm -hmm. I'm still. Mm. So, but I it's a shame, though. I, I really want to see that fight as well. well I do, I do. It's got a bit of momentum, hasn't it? It, it has, because John has got. He talks the big talk. Mm. I want to see him back it. Yeah, I mean, I've heard somebody. I've heard is it Joey Pyle Junior? Has he got a fight? So, so, so it's one of his fighters. Some Welsh kid. He's trying to get a fight with Mickey and that. But this kid's forty. 
So and, and, it, and it's this is a it's not nothing to do with this storyline. This storyline that's what it's become a bit of a pantomime, hasn't it? This storyline mm. is John's over fifty and he's the best man over fifty. Mick mm-hmm. doesn't agree with that and he wants to challenge John. And mm-hmm. then it's all been agreed and this and that, and John's saying you've got to fight and all this. Well, we're nine months down the line and nobody's thrown a punch. And there's only Mickey pushing for fights. John's mm. got to be hiding. We've silenced John Fury. Silenced him. The man didn't come out and do a video now because any YouTuber that does him a video now and doesn't ask him about Mickey Theo will be classed as a shit house, won't they, in the industry? They'll say, why? How can we not ask him about Mickey Theo? Because yeah, but the thing is, the, the thing is, Tyson will make sure before you do the interview, you don't ask him that question. Because I've seen a few, I've seen, I've seen a few videos of him, and no one's asked him that question. Yeah. You got to remember, a lot of people want to get out to Tyson Fury. Yeah. But they, they might want to go through the, that for for John Fury first. But John will make sure if you don't, as long as you don't ask the question. Yeah. You can have an interview you want. Because the, the question is embarrass it embarrasses him. Well, that's what's going on. They don't ask earlier. They want access to Furies because they do views, but they don't mm. ask the proper questions. They don't ask. They don't ask. Mm. Coogan asked mm. Tyson, didn't he, about that seven million to charity? Only because Eddie Earn told him to, and he were caught in the middle, but he never asked it again, did he? And nobody else did, did yeah. he? Yeah, the thing is, anyone could say they gave money to charity. Um, and it's not something to it, 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 the thing about charity is not something to play with. To say you give money to charity, they their own hype, didn't they? That they could just stand, start handing millions out. Nobody dared even text me about that charity donation now on my channel because they know in the hearts that it didn't happen. It didn't happen, uh, and, and you know what? It's sad. It's sad. It, yeah. If you say you're going to give money to charity, do what you say. If you're yeah. not going to give money to charity, it's fine. Who gives a cheque for seven million to a charity and don't want PR out of it? Come on. Do you know what I mean? But why say it? Seven million. Place? Why say it in first place and then nobody's allowed to ask you about it? Yeah, I've given all that to charity. Well, what charity was it? When did you give it? And what are they doing with it? And can we go? Can we go speak to them? Oh, yeah. they realise then you see. Do you know what I mean? Once you tell a lie, what you got to do? Got to tell another. Another lie. Yeah. So, so Coogan asked him. Coogan's asked him on IFL, asked him, and he shut him down, so it's none of your business what I do with my money. So that's how he shut it down, isn't it? So he got defensive. Yeah, instead of saying, yeah, we get it to homeless in California, blah, blah, blah. California? Something like that when it's some homeless charity or something. It's that far-fetched. They've added that many bits to the story since that nobody believes it. Anyway, I don't believe it, and they know he don't believe Charity it. Charity begins at home. Tell you what, you help people here tell you first. What, what I'll say, Tyson Fury, if that's true what you did, right, come on my channel and admit it. Show me proof that you give millions to that charity. Didn't happen, wouldn't happen, never happened. Rubbish. Nobody dare say a word, dare they? Sad. Right, moving on then, Tyson Fury, mm. next on list. Him and Big Dos Femi, are they going to fight and who wins? Ah, uh, it's a good one. Um, Fury, all day long. Yeah. The, the, on, the only chance that Femi has got is if he could attack, Star Mix fights, if he could attack Fury in the first five rounds to slow him down. Yeah. But Fury just angles, head movement, oh. his timing is amazing, his face is amazing. He's a of his craft in it, Tyson, isn't he? He is, he is, he is. Um, Femi, Femi's got a punch, but Fury's not going to stand there and get hit. Is Femi that guy. big a puncher? I mean, come on, he couldn't get Andy Ruiz out there, could he? He couldn't get Parker True. out there. Takami had help off referee. Who was he knocked out that's any good? Vladimir were 40 in his 42nd year. So is Femi a, a one punch KO artist or is he no. a cumulative puncher? No, he's not one punch. Definitely not one punch artist. He's not a I think Fury. Jackson, is he? Oh, no. Oh, God. The Hawk. The Hawk. No, 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 no. The Hawk. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Not Aaron Pryor, is he? No. Or oh, Tommy Hearn. What time is it? What time is it? Hawk oh, time. <laughs> it's not Tommy Hearns either. It's not Tommy Hearns. No, Tommy Hearns wanted to punch you when he first started out, you know. No, no. 
Kronk turn him into a puncher. Maybe they might turn Tyson into a punch. I mean, look what he did to Wilder. Wrote him off, didn't he? That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, Femi. Femi. Personally, if I was Femi, I'll have a couple of more fights. Yeah. Constantly improving with different style before I approach Tyson. Yeah. Tyson, as I said to you last week, he's a complete fighter. Yeah. He could box. He could. He could dance. He could. He could. Uh, he could. He, he could switch styles. He's. He could adjust the style. And that's another thing is with a lot of these fighters that we have now, a lot of them tend to fight on one gear, one level. Do you, I don't know if you've noticed that. You, you you look at the fight last week with um, Luke and um, the week before um, Callum. Yeah. Just one level. No angles, um, can't adjust in the fight, not reading the fight. Um, and I think that's what Tyson has got. Tyson can read the fight, you know, first few rounds, few feints, just to see where your timing's at. Um, and I think he's got an amazing boxing IQ. He's around uh, guys that have had champions. Yeah. You know. Um, with Femi, I don't think he's ready, personally. Big Dosa Femi. Sparring is completely different from a real fight. Yeah, they might, I know they've sparred in the past, and maybe Tyson, maybe Femi's got the best out of him. Mm. But for some reason, Tyson loves and he rises to the occasion. You know, yeah, he would just, <laughs> it would just be a long night for Femi. I don't think he's ready for, personally, I don't think he's ready for um, for Tyson. A couple of more fights with constant improvement, um, adopting new style to, 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 to his um, armour, I think he might stand a chance. But every time we see Femi, it's always the same. You know, every time you see Tyson, it's always something different. Either it's fine on orthodox or orthodox. It's just constantly mixing it up. Yeah. Um, you can't fight at just one level. And he's too stationary. Femi's too stationary for my liking. Fury moves, angles, sets traps, tricky, crafty. Um, it'll be a long night. If Ali's a 12 out of 10 for footwork, Tyson's an 11 out of 10, isn't he? For footwork. I agree. I agree. I agree. He, he moves very well for, for a speed, big... For speed, you'd have to say... For an heavyweight, he's, he's very fast, isn't he? He's not Amir Khan, uh, Hector Camacho, Ray Leonard fast, but he's very fast, isn't he? Yeah, for a big guy. Big guy, yeah. For a big guy, he's very fast. He's got amazing boxing IQ. Um, you can't just go into a fight just stationary. He reads the fight well. It's like football. You've got to read the game. If you're not reading the game, it's Do you think over if you're a player. If you can't read the game well. Um, and Fury could read the game. He could read the fight. He could read the fight very well. Um, it's just got amazing boxing IQ. Do you think that they're going to fight, or do you think it's going to be tied up in a legal dispute with Bob Arum and Al Heyman? Oh yeah, this, um, I've got a feeling maybe twenty twenty two. Yeah, it might happen. Um, possibly, maybe towards the end of the year. Yeah, uh, but then recently I've heard um, Femi saying that he might he's considering retiring after a few more fights. Yeah. So what does that mean? Mm. You know, and we know once him and Tyson fight, it's going to be a two fight. Uh, it's going to be a rematch clause. There's going to be a rematch clause, isn't it? Yeah. So towards the end of the uh, maybe towards the end of this year or next year. What's your thoughts? I don't think they'll fight. I don't think him and Joshua are going to fight this year because there's not going to be a gate, is there? Plus, people are going to be getting over the financial difficulties, aren't they? This is why I've got a problem with uh, Eddie Yearn per keeping uh, pay per view at 25 quid and even putting Dylan White Povetkin on his pay per view. People have got no money. Not everybody's mm -hmm. fortunate at the moment, are they? But, uh, yeah. but uh, I, I don't think they'll fight this year. Uh, 
I don't think Matchroom were ready to put Joshua near Tyson Fury until they've wrung every penny they can get out of Joshua. Then once he's spent, they'll get rid of him, like they did with Christopher Eubank Sr. Once he was spent, they, they let him fight the Collins fight, didn't they? Because they were, they were mm. not left. If you look at the fight before he fought Steve Collins, they were not left in him. And uh, he, he were coming to end. He were old before his time because he, he took punishment, took a lot of punishment. But uh, but point one, uh, point I want to make is that uh, they'll do the saying we're Joshua, accountant by name, accountant by nature. And that's just that's just the, that's just the nature of the beast. But, but I tell you one thing though. Sorry for for cutting oh, you there. Right, right, um, it's going to be slightly a bit different. With with Joshua, I know you were comparing Chris 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 Eubank uh, Senior. Joshua is a brand. You have to understand that yeah. he's a brand. He makes a lot of money for them. Yeah, they're all eating off the same table, aren't they? That's what I'm saying. It's going to be very hard, even if he loses, even if he loses his next four or five fights, he still packs arena. He still packs stadiums. He still packs venues. He's a brand. Yeah, you know, um, you know, he's 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 attracted a lot of female audience in the game. So when he's fighting, it was women watching his fight compared to most fighters. So he's a box office. So it's going to be very hard for them to dispose him. I, I, what I believe is, I think Femi will eventually cut ties with. Eddie Hearn and set up his own promotion company. I think he would do that. It would be like Mayweather with Bob Aaron. Yeah. I think that's what will happen. But I don't think they will get rid of him. He makes too much money for him. Even if he loses his next four fights, Josh still makes money. Out of all the fighters out there, he makes the most money. Yeah, he does, yeah. Look at the endorsement. YouTube TV adverts all over the place. The sponsorship is ridiculous. Yeah, he will be better off cutting tie with them, setting up his own promotion company. Yeah, got it made. Yeah, uh, Dylan. Yeah, Dylan White. Uh, said some things about Joe Joyce, called him Frankenstein, mm. and this and that, and blah de blah, and. Uh, and then when he beat Dubois, Dylan's not mm. his name now. I don't mention Joe Joyce's name. Don't even dream it. What do you want? Yeah, but went on there. Like, yeah, but <clears throat> is it a backward step for Dylan White to fight Joe Joyce? Uh, would well, why? Why would it be? He's just been iced for the second time, and uh, Joe Joyce has ranked high in one governing body. Dylan's. Uh, ranked high in another governing body, WBC, mm. so why not? It's the domestic, they're both from down south. Let's get at it. Let's get it on. You know, there's, It'd there's be juicy, bit, actually. A bit of beef there. Joe's got one more fight left with Bricktop, and I'm sure they could get it on, but let's have it right. Why don't Bricktop and and, and uh, Ed, Eddie Hills, 4-0 oh, amateur heavyweight, three by way of, why don't they get mm. their heads together and put Dylan White and Joyce on, on, on pay-per-view? Um, That'd be a good fight. Let Joyce end Dylan White's career because Dylan White don't want to be fighting anybody that that that, that can uh, who's got a bit about him. I don't even think he's that keen to fight Povetkin again, to be honest. From mm. what I'm hearing on the grape vine, mm. Mm. So maybe Dylan White says so maybe his arse has gone for it now. He's now he's been iced again. Maybe he's having inner doubts about himself and what he can do. We don't mm. know, do we? But it will be a good fight. It will be a good fight. Um, God, Joyce is uh, he keeps it simple, doesn't it? Just yeah. jab, jab. You can't go wrong with jabs. No. Where? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Yeah. So, who do you think wins, Joyce or Dylan White? Joyce, Joyce is Joyce could take punches. Jo Joyce is, um, I think Dylan White. Dylan White. One thing I admire about Dylan White is he 
take fighters, it takes fighters to a place that's unknown to them. You know, um, and he did that when he fought um, Parker. He took him to a place, and his, his manager, Parker's manager said it, it took Parker to a place where it was unknown, where no longer talent, it's just heart. I love the way what Dylan White fights because he will rough you up, he would stick his elbow in your face, he would, he would do anything to win. Now, if he goes back to the basic of being a body snatcher, just attacking the body, that would be a good strategy to beat Joyce. Because you don't get many heavyweights that go for the body. And, and I love fighters that go to the body. I love the body snatches, the, the, the what do you call it? Um, what do you call it? Uh, Mike McCollum. Yeah, but people keep going on about Dylan, Wright, Dylan White being this big roadman gangster body snatcher. Well, I mean, mm. he actually dropped with a body shot. I, mean, I keep hearing about it. It's the body snatcher, the body snatcher. That's just... We, we, Carl Froch is the Cobra, but he's not really a Cobra in real life, is he? Yeah. Well, you see, the thing about the being a body snatcher is it slows fighters down. Maybe. Maybe there could be that aspect to it, but he doesn't... And, 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 that, and that's the strategy. And that's what I was saying about Femi and, and, uh, and Fury. Some fighters, you need to slow them down. You need to slow that movement down because when you slow them down, they become stationary. Yeah, right in front of you now becomes an easy target. Yeah, because Joyce will keep coming forward and peppering with that jab, just keep peppering them like all, a all night long, like a woodpecker. Joyce. Yeah, a woodpecker. And and you, what I like about Joyce is he keeps it simple. Yeah. Doesn't complicate it. Just jab yeah. all night long. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, mate. You're right. Uh... But but if 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 Dylan could disrupt that um, by roughing him up, um, frustrating him, it could break Joyce. But I think I'll, I'll, I'll say Dylan will win. It'll be it'll be a close fight, but Dylan will win. Well, I, well, I don't I don't agree with you on that, John. I'm going to go for Joe Joyce to pepper him <laughs> for 12 round and uh, beat him on points uh, under than 10, under than 18. Joe Joyce for the points victory. Uh, I feel that Dylan White didn't show me anything against Anthony Joshua. He had a share of one round. He lost every other round. All this about it were life and death with Joshua. Load of old baloney. They were a load <sighs> of Frank Maloney. Crap. So I, I give him a but, shit but, one round against Femi. And, and, but he, he was going into that fight with injury, though. Well, why take it then? It was last minute. Last minute? It was, he had an eight when weeks. I said last minute, Wait. the injury was, I think, three weeks before the fight. Might you pull out then <laughs> and get it rearranged? It's a big fight. A lot of money being spent. It's so hard to pull out from fights like that. And this is, again, this is what happens a lot of the time. A lot of fighters go into... Big fights, injured, but you can't pull out because promotion has spent millions to then pull out. Well, Remember the I venues. Don't, I don't agree with that because when you go into a pay per view fight, they're all insured by Lloyd's of London for anybody injured, mm. motors, everybody. Mm. Everybody's insured, and if there's an injury, they get paid out by insurance companies. Yeah, there's there's mm. the fact that you you, you want to fight anyway, and you want you might need that money now, and that's up to you if you don't want to declare your injury, but. I don't want to hear about injuries. Uh, I know I know. they say Shaw, they want all that well, but I don't believe that. I believe he did it in fight. Maybe it might be an old injury, I don't know, but he just done a camp, hasn't he? Full camp. Yeah, so, but... And but I, how many that... rounds did you give him, though, John, in that fight? Which which fight? Dylan White against Big Dostafemi. How many rounds did you give him? Big Dostafemi. I didn't really give him too much. Maybe about three, four... Two, two, three, three, two, three, three rounds. I give him a share of one round. If if I were to not be harsh, you, I'd give and give him that one round. I didn't give him any other round. So mm. all this about life and death that Barry Hearns keeps going on about. It, 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 it's shocking, in, in my opinion. Barry Hearn, come and tell us why you're in Epstein's book. Don't be frightened. We just want the truth. All right, then we're moving on from Dylan White and Joyce. Do you think that Josh Taylor against Luke Campbell is a good fight? Luke Campbell, to be honest with you, the fight with Luke Campbell, I just, I was disappointed really against Garcia. Oh yeah, we are, yeah. 
I, I was. Well, I was asking you, do you think that Josh Taylor and Luke Campbell now is a good fight? But if you want to talk about Campbell first, yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it's it's a good fight. It's a good fight. Um, I mean, it's a good fight. It's I mean, interesting. I mean, it could be in talks because Shane McGuigan used to train uh, Taylor, didn't he? And he doesn't now, does he? So they've gone the separate. Yeah. Shane trains Campbell. And I'm hearing that it, it could be in talks because they feel that they've got a script to sell. So Taylor Campbell, you've heard it here first. So, yeah. but did, did, obviously it, going back to the Garcia Campbell fight, what did you think to that? Garcia is just on another level. Yeah, just another level. But then again, you look at Garcia, look at his camp. You look at the people in his camp. He's got Canelo. Canelo, you know, you're 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 training you're talking with champions you know you you will be crafty you will be you you'll be forced to have a good box and iq um he just smashed up luke um luke was just again one level one level no adjustment no movement yeah. um i really like luke but it just looked out of place he, the fight, he just looks like he shouldn't be in with um, Garcia. Yeah. You know, Garcia was setting traps, moving angles, and Luke was just. And even when he got, even when he got hit with that punch, he wasn't even covering his body. He had his um, elbow up, and he just caught him. Yeah. Which is a, a terrible technique, really. Yeah. What do you think about uh, so so you think that Luke Campbell basically do you think he's world elite he's not elite level is he world level or European no. in between European and world yeah uh, European I don't think as well what what world level you've seen these guys is they have a different level of, of yeah, boxing yeah. IQ um, I think um, switching back I think um, Billy Joe Saunders is world level yeah yeah. He's board level. All right, he can box. So you can move. Uh, Campbell's Euro level. Fair enough. What about Josh Taylor against Campbell? Who would you pick to win that at 140? I'll go for Josh Taylor. Yeah. You shouldn't have even had What about you? I'm Josh Taylor all day, mate. I'm a massive. All day, yeah. I'm a Josh Taylor yeah. groupie. I think he's a fantastic fighter and he beats him all day. All right. Mm. Uh, Callum Smith against Blake Cabarello at 175 as a fight to feel he's sent into the 175 division. What do you think to that? Very similar, again, to the discussion we had just, just um, previously. Um, Callum Taylor, um, Callum Smith, good fighter. Um, again, we were, uh, yeah. Uh, who wins? I just give it to Callum Smith. Callum Smith against Blake Cabarello. You're going to give it to Callum Smith, yeah. I think, yeah. And did, what about uh, Jean Pascal <laughs> against Callum Johnson for world title? Do you think that's a good fight? Pascal's a veteran. Yeah, he's, but he, tough, he, he tough kid. For world title twelve years ago. He's still, he's still about. He's still he, about. Cool, did he, he fought Kulev? Cool, cool didn't he? He fought uh, Ko uh, Kovalev. Kovalev, sorry, Kovalev. He fought him twice. Um, he against him twice when he were at his peak, though. And he fought Hopkins as well. He fought Hopkins twice, Kovalev twice, Froch. He beat uh, Daya Kona and Dawson. He took their O's and uh, Dawson yeah. was found at the time. He took their O's. He's that Ring Magazine belt, WBC belt, IBO belt, all at 175. Uh, He's now got the WBA belt. He's been around. He's been around. He's been around I think it'll be a good fight. Him against Callum Johnson's a great fight, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. and, and I think if Callum Smith enters 175, Cabarello's a good fight to start off with. Or he goes to yeah. Bivol and people like that. But I think that's an exciting division, just like 135. Do you agree? Yeah, it's picking up. It's picking up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's finish Let's finish off on uh, the drug situation in boxing at the moment. And then, obviously... <coughs> We're, is it 530 days or something? We're 500 and odd days since Dylan White's B sample uh, got got lost in, in, in Royal Mail. <laughs> but uh, it got lost in transit, didn't it? Uh, mm. But uh, 
what do you think about the drug situation in boxing at the moment? Uh, oh. Are they yeah, testing yeah, yeah. everybody at the moment, or is it are, they, is it are not people not getting tested? Because I don't seem to see anybody saying they've been drug tested and things like that at the moment. Nobody's shouting about yeah. it, are they? That that smell is not going to go away. Um, it's always going to be drug and boxing. Yeah, it's always going to be drugs and boxing in yeah. any combat sport. It's always going to be drugs. Yeah, people always find alternative ways, creative ways of getting through it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, which, which is a shame, really, because it, it, it's dangerous. When you find someone, you you know, you 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 know, um, it's um, it's killing the sport. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look at what's his name. Um, what was the lad that was meant to fight Joshua before um, Ruiz stepped in? Oh, Jarrell Miller. Jar Jarrell Miller. Yeah. Throws under twice. The, under than twenty punches around he throws and he's twenty three stone. Oh, do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, so it, it's, you can't get, it, it'll be very, very hard to get rid of it. They're not testing everybody. No, no. no. Selected, select, selective testing is what they're doing. Yeah. What did you think to, uh, well, I've lost my train of thought. Now. What did you think to the Helmets of the Year winner? Oh, uh, um, Bellew. Oh, well, Bill, yeah, not surprised, not surprised. He's good. Bill has always been that guy. He's always going to be that guy, you know. Um, He'll be a nice guy in life, but when you put him near a camera and that, my God. You know, if his mates are taking it, it's fine. We look for an excuse. Uh, someone else is taking it, then we're going to slander that person. Yeah. That's Bill. It's, it's not good, but... Uh... All right, then. Uh, well, we're going to say a little something else that we're going to say there. Oh, uh, what's your most, what's the fight you want to see most this year, John? Mm. <laughs> well, apart from um, John Fury and uh, yeah. Mickey Field. John Fury's in hiding, isn't he? That's the fight I want to see this year, but um, mate, you want to see my inbox every single morning. People wanting it's all good to go, mate. Platform, venue, uh, really, contracts are already. Yeah, we just need John to come out and say whether he wants to fight or not. Yeah, it's all there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. There's some serious people involved in it, and it's such a wow, trouble. how can they get? Is there anyone that's really close to John that could get get him to say something? Somebody's obviously said to him, he's looking for a way out, isn't he? So, and usually the way out is silence, isn't it? Or you can say, well, people are trying to make a name for this and off my name. What, off your name? What, you, what, we a poor journeyman's re man's record. How's, how can anybody make a, a name off your name? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Kind of mm -hmm. But, mm. uh, but yeah, back to your question. Um, I would love to see, obviously, Tyson and uh, Femi will be a good one. Um, Canelo. I don't think they both want it, really. To be honest. I'd, I'd like to think that Tyson wants it more than Femi, but there's a lot to lose, and uh, it could go down as a Riddick Rowe Lewis, couldn't it? Yeah, there's a lot to lose, but um, I think, yeah, I think Tyson wants it more because yeah. Tyson knows he is ready. Yeah. Tyson knows Femi is not complete yet. Mm. Let's take the fight now before it becomes it gets to that next level. Mm -hmm. Tyson. Tyson knows already. Tyson's already got a game plan what he's going to do. Tyson might already be at that next level, but what I think you're going to get from Tyson now is if they do offer the fight, they're going to say, Well, I need a tune up fight because I've been out a year. Mm. And, I can, and I can gut it well another time and have an easy one and pick up some easy readies. But it, it's got to the stage now where if either of them fight next and it isn't against each other, I'm not, I'm not interested, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and the other thing is... about all this be... mandatory stuff. Throw all belts in bin. Yeah. The, the, the other thing that could be quite dangerous to both of them is when they fight 
a fight that they're not really motivated, they could lose. Each one of them could lose. Yeah. Because that, that tends to happen as well. You know, when you say, oh, let me take this fight on. Yeah. But you're not really motivated for that fight. Whereas Tyson's motivated to fight Femi. Femi, will, I'm sure Femi's motivated to fight uh, Tyson. But they fight one of these young killers coming up that's really hungry, that's starving. It could, there could be an upset, like Ruiz. Mate, Another guy that everyone keeps avoiding is, um, I know Dylan, I know Dylan White beat him, Oscar Rivas. I think he's so an underrated fighter and everyone's scared to fight this kid. Well, if you look at Joshua's last few fights, Pula, a man in his 40th year, Ruiz rematch, he fought like a frightened rabbit. The first one, he got dropped several times. His last mm. few <clears throat> have been who? Pure AIDS. So, and you look at Tyson Fury's last performance, and, and you know, he, he demolished a, a five year champion, didn't he? Who never been, mm. who dropped everybody he'd ever fought. So, you know, it, it puts it into perspective that Joshua is probably world level, but he's not elite level. He's not elite, no. He's not elite. He's elite. But, but, yeah. And there's some young killers coming up. Hence the reason why he's saying, you know, he might contemplate retiring. And I don't blame him. I don't blame him because he will, because they know if they could clip him on that chin, it'll be a good night. Whereas Tyson, and I'll tell you this, if Tyson and Femi, if they fought, at some stage, Femi will put him down. I'll guarantee you that. Femi will put him down, but he will get back up. See, the thing about, about uh, Tyson is, you could put him down, he would get back up. Yeah. And that's why, I, and, and, you know, when he fought uh, Wilder first time and Wilder put him down, he broke Wilder's heart when he got back up. Yeah. Because you're thinking, Jesus, gave him my best shot. He went to sleep and he just woke up like his alarm clock went off. <laughs> so that's your fight that you want to see most, and apart from John Fury against Mickey Theo. John Fury, yeah. Um, Canelo versus Bill, B Billy Joe Saunders. Yeah. Garcia versus uh, either Tank or Haney. Yeah. Um, just really disappointing. Luke. Uh, Luke versus Josh Taylor. That would be interesting. What about Callum Johnson Baturbia rematch? That would be a good one. Yeah. That would be a good one. Um, Anthony Yard and Arthur. What's Arthor. Rematch. It's a good rematch, one. yeah. Because because that that's gonna be making of him. If he loses again, pack it in. Yeah. Yeah. Either either move somewhere to the desert and start training or go to America or change camp. He needs to get out of that comfort zone. He, he, he needs to have champions in his either sparring with champions or or he's got champions around him. He needs that around him. Because you look at Garcia, Haney, all these guys have got champions around them. You've got Mayweather training, you're giving teaching techniques, um, tricks and all different things and tuning your mindset to fight a certain way. Tuning your mindset to know how to win. As much as I don't like, I'm not a big fan of Mayweather. I respect his fights because he knows how to win. Yeah, you're right. He, he knows how to win. Um, so Yard would need to um, look at everything again, reflect on everything again. And if he wants to be an elite fighter or a champion, he's going to have to change camp. Yeah. He's going to have to change camp, bring in some sparring partners that would really, really give him a good fight. Um, you know, uh, all this may have, they need to, you know, have a move camps or just, he just needs to, he needs to be uncomfortable. Yeah. He's too comfortable. He, to me, it seems everything is too comfortable. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, uh, it's just too, too comfortable. That mind of a killer, it needs to come out. It needs to be with, with, with hungry fighters. It needs to be out of that comfort zone. Yeah. And he's got these people around him and everybody's just, uh, everything is just nice and comfortable. No. Yeah. You know, the days of Ben. Ben used to go and spar with, Ben used to spar with Duran. Yeah. He did, yeah. Took out, he went out on his court. Wait, listen, I'm going to get off, John. It's a pleasure. 
Thanks for... Thanks no worries. For I'll see you again, John. No worries. We'll catch up soon, OK? Take care, mate. Bye. Take care, mate. Cheers, mate. Bye. Take care. Okay. <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? Right. First of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me, porkycorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>